Hi, you probably know me as Dr. Bones, the Dr. Bones Show. Well, I'm also the juggling gourmet. Yes, I've been a gourmet chef for more than 20 years, and I've been doing science of cooking for about 10 years. So, science in the kitchen, bringing the kitchen to the classroom. We're going to do something that I invented a few years ago called a blueberry French toast roll. So, if you're like me, you got bread that's stale, what are you going to do with it? All right, so what we need today is some type of uncut hamburger bun or roll, right? Not necessarily a hamburger bun, the cheapo kind, but something with a little substance to it. What we're going to do is cut into these rolls or buns and stick blueberries in there. Yeah, you can actually take your knife, slice in, and stick in a blueberry. So I've got my blueberries over here. If I simply put in a cut and then stick the blueberry in there, it stays in there. The problem with blueberry French toast is the blueberries always fall out of the toast. You ever make blueberry pancakes and half of the blueberries are still in the, in the pan? Well, that's the problem. So in this way, you can actually put as many blueberries as this thing will hold by simply cutting in, opening the cut, sticking in the blueberry, right? So if you zoom in here, you can see some of the ones I've done already, right? So it's, here's like a, a bun. Now this wasn't cut previously. I actually put cuts in and then put the blueberries in and I can do this anywhere on this bun, all right? So on the roll, on the bun, you simply cut in and then place the blueberries in there. Now, the French toast part. Well, you're going to need my recipe. You got a couple of eggs, all right? So I've got a couple of eggs. By the way, if you've seen me before, I like to juggle. So here I am juggling some eggs here. All right, so here I go, juggling eggs. Oh my goodness, the juggling gourmet. He's at it again. Oh my goodness, the juggling gourmet. All right. Be careful with the eggs, you'll make a big mess. I do four eggs, but we're running a little bit short on time today. All right, so once you got your eggs into a nice Pyrex, all right, here's my Pyrex, I'm going to put in a couple of cups of milk, all right? So two cups of milk, and we're ready to froth this up. In the old days here, if you zoom back, you'll see me juggling here. You, uh, duties in the kitchen can be dangerous, right? Beating the eggs, whipping the cream. All right, so here we've got a classic whip. Whoops, hopefully I won't be dropping too many things today. So here we've got, oh, well, okay. It's okay if I drop stuff every now and again. So, all right, so why bother doing that when you can either use one of these, which is fun. All right, you've got some gears here. We like to talk about science in the kitchen, so we can talk about gears. And this is kind of fun to do. And if you don't like to do stuff like that, which of course you can see that I like to do stuff like that, but if you don't like to do stuff like that, then you can get something to make your life a little bit easier. All right, so here we go. Okay, so, oh my goodness, nicely blended up there. All right, so a really easy and fun way to enjoy blueberries in a French toast setting without all the blueberries falling out. All right, got a little ladle here, except in this case, more like a strainer, all right? So a strainer, and I can put this strainer into my egg milk concoction, what I'm going to do is simply put my item with the blueberries into this and I can dip it in, let it sit for a bit, okay, bubbles up nicely. I can scoop it out and put it into the pan, all right, so I've got a nice presto pan here and I'm going to simply pop it into the pan when we're ready to go here. All right, so 
strain off the excess and into the pan it goes all right get back there and there you go a little excess blueberries all right I know you can't see it from this angle but that's okay we're simply going to try another one so here we go again this could be stale bread don't throw away your stale bread you can simply do a neat creation here I'm going to get this to kind of nicely done here all right you can use various ways of doing this I like this because I don't like to have too much excess and then right into the pan all right I can even flip that over if you want and that's ready to go all right here's one of the final finished products here all right you can take a look here I don't know if you can zoom in on that looks really nice it's very heavy it's heavy with blueberries this is the neat part about this you can't get French toast with all kinds of blueberries in it and it's very difficult to get whoops there we go Ah, the skills of Dr. Bones here. Oh, there we go. I'm actually going to throw that in there. That's a couple days old, but that'll last me at least a week. All right? You can enjoy these over the week's time. Okay, so really simple stuff. Instead of milk, all right, so actually you've got some milk here. Instead of milk, don't do this with milk in it, all right? You can use coconut milk, all right? Coconut milk is nice if you're a lactose intolerant. Lactose is a milk sugar. You need lactase, the enzyme, to digest the lactose, right? Turning it into glucose. And you can use coconut milk instead. As far as the blueberries are concerned, blueberries are great because they have anthocyanins, right? And these are useful for scavenging free radicals. They're delicious. There's vitamin C, there's thiamine, manganese, all right? Right from the periodic table, manganese in your blueberries. But you can use any type of berry-like item. Raspberries, black raspberries, red raspberries, different ones. There's a guy named the Berry Doctor. He talks all about the benefits of berries. So I've got that cooking up here. Another thing you might try, a little bit of flavoring, vanilla, orange, you want to be scientific about it? Here, watch this. You can use a pipette and the bulb. Yes, this is a pipette. I can put in a milliliter, two milliliters, three milliliters, right? Science coming to the kitchen. So you simply put on your pipette and the bulb, and you draw in however much vanilla you want and throw it into your concoction, all right? So science ready, willing, and able. Now, one final thing I've got here to show you. Once you've got these things cooking, and I'll turn these over. Again, I'm sorry we don't have an overhead. Okay, I'll just turn this over. We don't have an overhead view, but they're cooking up nicely. What you can do, and I usually like to put the cover on here. One interesting thing about cooking is if you put some water in the pan, the water will turn to steam, and the steam, that energy, right, that heat can be used to cook the inside of the object that you're trying to cook so that you get thorough cooking. Here I've got a multimeter with a thermocouple. So I can take this thermocouple, which is a basically another form of a thermometer, I turn this on, and then I can go and stick the thermocouple into the item to see what the inside temperature would be. All right, so here we've got a temperature about 76 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to stick that in here. Well, it's really going up over 100, 110, really getting up there. Okay, 120. All right, so you're getting the inner temperature of your item. So I'm actually bringing again science to the kitchen. Oh my goodness, that's good. That's about 120 degrees on the inside. So that's going to be safe to eat. Food safety, very important, right? Washing your hands, cooking things properly. Again, eggs are great, but be careful. You want to cook them thoroughly, right? So when you're using, uh, doing French toast, you're going to use eggs. Cook those items thoroughly. All right, so I've got my multimeter and the thermocouple. 
at my disposal for measuring the, the temperature. One final thing before we go. If you want to do your traditional French toast using the Pyrex type glassware, right? This is sort of like something you'd find in a science lab. You can get a size that's basically fits your bread in there. So what you do is you simply, and I'll just simply pour this in from my French toast blueberry roll concoction. All right, so there we go. We're ready to go. And then you can dip your bread into this. And you've got a nice fitting structure so that that toast gets covered well without having to waste a lot of area. All right, oh, these are looking pretty nice here. The one I did the other day is browning up even more. And it's really delicious. I'm going to pop this in here now. Let that cook away. This is a non-stick pan, but there's no harm in putting a little bit of butter in there. Why do I like butter? Butter adds flavor, okay? I don't know if you know anything about molecules. If you, you've seen some of my other Dr. Bone shows, we talk about food molecules, the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. The fats give you flavor, all right? There are fatty acid esters in fats, and butter is delicious. There's actually a bacteria added to butter to give it its flavor as well, and it's not a harmful bacteria. I'm going to throw in a little butter into my pan just to get this to give me a nice flavor, all right? So you can enjoy science in the kitchen and understand a variety of things about cooking and food in physics, okay? By the way, it's called molecular gastronomy if you're interested in studying the science of cooking. We call it molecular gastronomy. I don't know if you can hear that. It's a wonderful sound, butter. In fact, is a friend of mine, he says that uh, the greatest sound in the history of sound is bacon frying. Sounds like everyone's clapping. <sighs> He's crazy, yes, I know. All right, so we'll see you in another segment, Juggling Gourmet, Dr. Bone Show. Blueberry French Toast Rolls, they're delicious. I'm going to have one when we're finished here, okay? So take care, bye for now.